Hello and welcome back to our KSP career with me and what seems to be launching of a noodle booster rocket. Yes, this is our Urlum Explorer. And apparently I haven't auto strutted everything. I thought I did, but uh, apparently those boosters have not been strutted because the ship maneuvers like a wet noodle. All right, well, fair enough, it can happen. So the purpose for today, as the title might suggest, is that we are taking our deep space probe, the design that has already worked for us. I think we sent the one to Jewel or something like that. I'm actually not sure, maybe we didn't, but uh, this deep space probe is designed to go to Urlum, Plocknaden, um, Sarnas and all of the outer planets mod. So hopefully it will have enough Delta V to basically reach there. Um, I know it doesn't seem like that way, but uh, we are still in the atmosphere, so the calculations are done using that. Now, uh, my engineer tells me it's around 7,000 meters per second from this moment, so after circularization there should be 6, which should be plenty to reach anybody, at least to perform a flyby. Getting into orbit might be a different whole story and shebang, but I don't care about this at the moment. All I care about is getting some science, at least, transmitted back to Kerbin, and basically, yeah. So, that's the idea. So, without further ado, we're just making a 100 km circularization orbit, after which we will be performing a departure from Kerbin, exactly. So, uh, yeah, starting the burn in 20-ish seconds. We're gonna accelerate time a little bit. Oh, no, we're not. We're just going to decouple. Yes, there we go. Good. Beautiful. Look at it burn. Burn all the way, you sunshine. That's fair enough. So now let's see what do we have here. Uh, right. All right. Let's see. Uh, yeah, expanding everything because it looks kind of nice. And trying to find a decent transfer. You know, it's hard to find good transfer these days. This uh, ship tends, these ships tend to fly off quite regularly, sadly. So, yeah. Let's see if it works. Come on. Skedoodle. There we go. Yep. All right. Okay, I think we have a close approach to Urlum, hopefully soon enough. Just trying to find the optimum approach. So yeah, that's, that's the thing going on. All right, so, and we have an encounter, beautiful. All right, getting ready to optimize the maneuver a little bit. Yep. Come on, come on. Close but no cigar. Come on, give me the cigar. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, uh, Urlum Periapsis. I don't need it to be stellar. I just need to fiddle with it to make it good enough so that the, you know, burn doesn't disrupt it to the point where, you know, whatever. Okay. So, yeah. Putting down the periapsis a little bit, experimenting how to get the closest approach, and that's good enough in my book. There we go. Something along these lines. And as you can tell, the next thing where which we'll be launching probably is the Sarnus thingy. So yeah. All right. There we go. Where is my... Yeah, let's close that off. We don't need to be watching at my task list for the next 10 episodes or so. I mean, it's good. It gives you a hint what, what, what's going to be happening sooner rather than later. So the burn will be in 1 minute and 28 seconds. 
which I assume is quite good. So let's uh, make sure that we get to it. There we go. Okay, and burn. Sorry, it's on the little bit dark side of the planet, but usually, you know, launching further into the star system or into our solar system usually takes it from the dark side. Oh, and there's a moonrise, beautiful. Okay, hitting the engine, LH2 engine, liquid hy hydrogen engine. Overall performs quite nice, it's one of those cryogenic engines mod, I think. It actually works quite nicely, if I dare say so. So everything is, we are on route and the moment we get close to getting the burn done, I'm switching us to the map view to make sure that we do secure an encounter with Urlum. Probably it will take years until we get there, so see, it was gonna take us T minus 12 years and 133 days to reach Urlum. So yeah, I'm not gonna go even how much it will take us to reach others. Like I'm, I remember the Plock mission. We were going to the Plock and it said it's gonna take us 39 years. Yeah, so after 39 years, we have to wake up and say, ooh, today's the day that we're passing by, you know, Plock. Nice. Sort of like keeping up with the Voyager and Voyager 2. I mean, ultimately, the guys that left the solar system, but where are you going now? Well, we have no idea. Huh, that's cool. But they still managed to keep in touch. That's amazing if you think about. We've reached the end of the solar system and still the, uh, the our probe that left is actually managing to communicate back. At certain points. So, uh, right. Now, let's see. What do we have? We have a tiny correction burn that's supposed to take 30 meters per second and it's gonna be booked to happen in four and a half years. I think that's good enough. All right. I don't think I'm gonna accelerate time until that encounter though. So let's see, can I actually rename this guy? So yeah. Distant Explorer, I'm going to rename it to Ullum Explorer, so that we know where is it going in the list. And now I'm just aligning it nicely, because you guys get a chance to, for a front row seat of departure of our Ullum probe. And look at that, oh, I'm going to make a screenshot out of it for today's episode, it's glorious. Bye bye Ullum Explorer, and you guys smash that like button, Hit subscribe if you want to and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.